All right. Arius, the challenge is issued to you. And as you prepare to respond, um, the ogre from the Council of Storms stomps his foot on the ground and takes takes a step forward. This will not happen on this day. You will both stand down. War is on us. We cannot be fighting each other over squabbles of opinion and matters of personal... And he looks to you, Arius. Inferiorities. I'm sorry, what? (laughs) It is important that we stay together or we will die apart. I agree. It was this man who issued the challenge, not me. Yes, but it was you that run your mouth yet again to a commanding officer. Please cease that action, Arius. The order exists for a reason. It is what keeps things together. And while I would love sometimes to do nothing more than smash a few skulls together to solve my problems, I recognize the value we have in what is here. Tomorrow there will likely be another lion attack. And it will likely be larger. And in the meantime, you need to commune with your god and find out what we can do to fix these things. You have a man here who is wrongfully killed. It's your god's misunderstanding. Fix it! And the cleric looks at him. His face kind of straightens out. The anger starts to kind of pour away from him. And it almost seems like it's turning to like a blend of, of fear and respect. And he, he nods. Um, and he tries to recompose himself. Everyone that isn't on duty right now, get some rest. That's an order. And he stands there waiting for everyone to disperse. Cleric. He's friend. I'll offer my hand to him. For now, there will be peace. And he'll uh, he'll take your hand. And he'll, like, attempt to pull you in. Uh, give me an opposed strength check. Um, okay. <laughs> what the fuck is going on with his strength? So yeah, he'll, he'll just pull you in close. But one day, one day, uh, I'll stop that fucking smart mouth of yours. And he lets go of your hand and turns and walks. Hold on. <laughs> I'll go to reach for him. Uh huh. He'll he'll pause and he'll look back at you. No need for that. Can I accompany you to do some research on Lars? I have much to learn, clearly. Sure. Come along. All right. Um, over that evening, um there are some things that you'll discover that you'll likely want to share with the party in the morning. Um, through, a com- through aiding him in communion, uh, Lars has a request that can res- restore what has been lost to Cassius. Um, there is a camp of lions that exists. Wait, what has been lost from Cassius? Yes. You died? Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. There is a camp of lions nearby. It's lions have been uh, thinned significantly by your actions. And the group refuses to join up with the other clans. Their pride has gotten in the way. And Lars is very unhappy with their actions. And if you can teach them what dishonorable bastards they are, uh, then he will remove what has happened to Cassius. And he will put an end to this war once and for all. Uh, so this is when we're, while, while I'm communing with uh, this cleric? Yes. What is your name, good sir? Uh, this cleric's name... Actually, did not get that. Hold on one sec. <laughs> um... Oops. 
I am Ookshish. Pardon my pronunciation. Ookshish. 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 Yes. Cleric is fine. Uh, <laughs> in what in what manner of offering uh, should we give to Lars as thanks for this information? Acceptance. All right. I apologize for my back talk earlier. <coughs> I, your words struck down deep as I'm trying to become more honorable, and I I felt I was acting in in good faith and turning the tide of the battle in my favor, but perhaps I misunderstood the nature of... I'm not, I'm not a godly man. I, I don't understand the nature of the fight, perhaps. When you make a challenge to one man, it is important that you mean for that challenge to be a challenge. If you stand without challenge, there is no challenge. That is one way to look at it. The way I was looking at it was... I overcame the challenge by solving it, but I see your point. There was no challenge. At no point because I challenge. had solved the problem. But then it's not yes, a I challenge. See. If you solve something before you engage in it, it's not a challenge. Fair, fair point. Fair point. Does your god take uh, monetary contributions? Is this helpful at all to your cause? Wealth. His needs are for actions. Very well. I will bring the information to my party and perhaps we can set Lars right with this action. Thank you. Good day. And I'll head back to the party. Okay. Uh, everybody else will be waking up on this day. Um. All right. Uh, so, uh, the rest of you, what are you doing in the morning? Um. Talking to ghosts. Okay. Give me your, uh, or I'll give you the check here. Hold on. You guys, the rest of you can carry on with what you're doing while I roll this up for Sphinx. I'll be, uh, communing with the shock. Okay. I'll be uh, communing with a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Sphinx, you have a ghost of dungeoneering. Ooh. Another one. All right. Uh, so following people's communions... Um, I'm assuming, I'm presuming the party gathers together. Yeah. There is, in fact, no lion approach on this day. And one of you knows why. Uh, so yeah, I commu uh, communicate what I learned to the party about how there's a group of lions that we, Lars wishes to teach a lesson to for abandoning their clan. Or their pack. And if we uh, set them straight, Lars will be content and call off this war. Also, I fucked that cleric up. No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> we won't see him around anymore. No. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, can, can we trust, trust Lars on this? Like, is he not maybe just sending us to, uh, attempting to send us to our deaths, uh, to get vengeance for, uh, his perceived wrong in your fight? I mean, I, I act as if, I mean, this came from the cleric himself. He, he communed with him. I did not hear this firsthand. I would assume Lars would not lie to one of his own clerics, but who knows the, the nature of the gods. I clearly misunderstand them quite often. This is what I believe to be true. I don't know what else you, what all you think. Oh well, I mean, hopefully it's not just the cleric making up a story. Then I believe you'd be severely punished by the military if were that be the case. I would hope. I mean, or, if none of us come back, maybe he wouldn't be. Or Lars, because I don't think that he'd fair point. find it fair to send us into a 
send us to our deaths. I mean, you were you were there as part of the communion, Arius. So, so I actually heard Lars. Yes, speak you this? not oh. you didn't hear Lars speak it okay. directly, but you were able to view like uh, the effects of the commune. Okay. And commune is a, is like a very detailed like thing to happen. You don't okay, you so don't just simply up. like you know say oh yes this is what my god is telling me this is like you set things up in a very specific manner you take a lot of time you expend a lot of resources and you commune actively with the but gods. The- theoretically he could have lied what Lars said to him or is that not in a way I mean like, I am- it would be bad for him in like every way so he follows okay. a lawful god. Right? So okay. if he were to tell you a falsehood to send you off on a mission that gets you killed while declaring Lars is the person who instructed you to do it, I mean, he would yeah. basically not wake up tomorrow. <laughs> okay, yeah, if I understood this, I would communicate this to Zeke. Say, yes. Uh, yeah, if I understood that, so I would say, yeah, from what I understand of the gods, if he were lying about this, it would be his death. You would not do such a thing. All right. Good enough for me. Are we all in accordance? We should handle these little group of outskirt lives. Was there any more clarification on how we are to handle them? <laughs> it seemed to be heavily implied that we are to set an example. I don't think we want to murder them all because he wants them to join back with the pack. If they're all dead, they can't do such a thing. Well, yeah, I think we're... I said call the group. Yes. Not, not kill all of them. Yes. Yeah. Maybe take down the one in charge. That is probably the one that has decided uh, to not bring the group in. You could charge him, challenge him to an honorable battle, Arius. <laughs> you like to do that, right? I <laughs> like to right the wrongs <laughs> that we got someone innocently killed. This group of lions, I feel no attachment to. We haven't done anything wrong to them. How's the party leader feel about this? Um, so, so yeah, uh, I pretty much would be sort of like looking around, um, getting sort of the general feel. Um, and I think overall, um, I've been taking a very passive stance to wanting to engage in any of these conflicts because it kind of feels like the military outside of our knowing started this war and they're expecting us to kind of help them fix it. Um, which I, I know Arius and I were both very frustrated with that they had that sort of like, just treat us like a, a tool kind of mentality. Um, but in this case, if this could end further war um, and also help undo the mistake that Mal caused to Cassius, I think I wouldn't, I'd still be very quiet, but um, I would say that I think it's in our best interest probably to do this. Okay. Maldronicus also it would it would put it would put my my mind at rest after all the mistakes that have rippled from my decisions as of late. Maldronicus, the the cloak I used earlier, I'll hand it to him, and um, you should designate this to who you feel is most needing as the leader. And I'll remove this from my stats. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Until we figure out what uh, what's going on with uh, Zeke's friend, um, probably probably myself or Zeke. But uh, I'm hoping to finish my armor for Zeke soon. So hopefully that'll help on that front too. But. Um, Speaking of which, Steve, how is my project with that going? Like, it's um, been, I haven't had a lot of full days of work on it. Um, with you're all coming the, up. You're coming up on finishing it up. Um, so it's a, it's like coming together. You know, like, can you can you give me like a sort of a wide estimate? You should be in the next those? day or so. Oh, okay. depend upon okay. how much how much time you can put into it. So I would like. I would like have Zeke sort of like trying it on. Yes. Just to like see if it like looks like it's sizing well and stuff like that. Yep. But with hopes. I don't know where we'll be deployed after hopefully this war is resolved. Um, 
but hopefully this will keep us safer when we have to go near uh, these hot spots that this wizard likes to attack Zeke get. Oh, are we ever gonna um, address apparently all the intel I brought with about religion or no oh, I was oh, meaning to, to Steve yeah from the what information I brought from Scout you've you've given that information over um, so it's a matter of when the information will be given back to you guys the next part of the information will be given to you guys from what you've from the information you've shared um, oh. Tonelli has discussed plans but this war has kind of got in the way I, I would say uh, if you start asking, like, mentioning that, I might say that it might be best for us just to wait for protocol to get called. But um, at the same time, I'm kind of on a, an internal conflict with that at the moment. So <laughs> since they don't follow protocol. But if there's anything very pressing that you think we should know, just uh, write it on like a napkin or something. I don't even know what I know. Um, you got some of what you know. I can't look at my Discord right now because we use Discord as our primary communications conduit. But I gave you some of it. Some of it. Oh, sorry, no. Some of it you're not supposed to know because you gave it in the form of a letter and not in the form of verbal communication. I. I would also, since I was not at the combat, I would just look at you, Arius, and just ask, uh, so is it, is it finished? Did I believe his, I, the rest he wanted? I believe I put him to rest. However, Lars was not super thrilled with my methods. Um, the creature has drained some of my life force. I felt I'd spent several years accompanying the creature through his battles. And when I returned, I was in still in combat, so I feel this was maybe slight punishment for not proceeding in the combat in the way Lars envisioned it. However, I was going to bring up, are we? do we have any qualms about just going out and killing these creatures unprovoked? Um, actually, I want to do a slight update here real quick. I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, I did find the, the note. I did not give you the information I thought I did, uh, so we'll discuss that okay. in a minute. Okay. Go ahead, continue. I'm sorry. Although Lars has commanded this, it just feels Lars being the god of fair combat. I mean, when we get there and they are obviously going to attack us and say no, I just, what is our plan? Are we just murdering, fighting them to the, until they surrender and agree? Well, at, at a certain point, it becomes necessary. Um, if I had been more resolved in doing what Lars wanted, we could have spared many more lives than had to be lost that day. Um, but I would at least like to offer those that do not wish to fight the opportunity to not do so. I'm not going to put down someone that has no desire to fight. But if there's those that cannot be talked down, then I don't think we have a choice. Lars doesn't seem to respect the taking of prisoners. Also, I know Lars is a stickler for the rules. He did say he wanted direct examples made of them. So I think if we if they all agree nicely, I think that won't satisfy Lars. I think we have to punish some for their disobedience. Seems to like punishing the leader for making the choice to keep them apart. I, th I think whether or not they all agree to do this, we must have some combat in this. So, uh, so okay, so what what did, was Lars's issue with these guys? Like, they didn't want to come in war with us? No, they've, they've basically lost their, they, they've lost their pack. So, like, each of these lion, tr so from, from the best you can comprehend from this, from what was, from what was told from the commune, each of these were lion packs kind of has their own, their own pride of lions that, that, follow with them that they kind of like you know are the leaders of and this this pride has lost their pack 
Um, all that is left is the were lions within it. And they are too proud to acknowledge that they are no longer like they are no longer the, the force that they are. So they should be going back to the other forces and like, you know, trying to like re uh, re empower or provide aid to the other groups. And they are refusing to do so uh, feeling like they alone should do what they uh, what they want to do. Um, even though it is, it is entirely in opposition to like, good tactical methods um and it is like they're not they're not actively fighting anyone either they're just kind of staying in their camp and um doing their thing so it's they're really more acting cowardly by not in not attempting to engage in any way um and not attempting to supply any reinforcements to anyone else so it's kind of like a twofold pun it's kind of like a twofold uh failure to comply with their beliefs Plus side, at least it seems like they're not in his good graces at the moment, so it doesn't seem like they'll be getting any kind of benefit from him. I would. Given it seems that they've demonstrated some ability to not want conflict, I also just of all of these species we've encountered so far, I would be really surprised if they all just go peacefully. So... I think whether we want it or not, conflict will probably find us. Um, but if it doesn't, then we will have to make that decision as we see fit. But... We should also probably cl clarify our clarify with Tanelli what our exact orders are here. I didn't it kind of just came from the cleric to here. I don't know what the official sanction is. I mean, I'm sure if. Uh... As you're as you're kind of saying that, actually, um, Tanelli is not too far off and uh, speaks up. I have your orders. Hmm. This, again, as I said, as I spoke to you before, we will not be requiring you to necessarily do what we ask in its exact permutations unless it is of of great urgency this war can be handled in one of two ways we can either defend ourselves here or you may take on this task however we know there is great benefit beyond a comp beyond ending this war at least putting pause to this war the other benefit is your friend cassius he now suffers from the damage that being brought back has caused him. Now, well, I acknowledge that whomever it is that killed that were lion is responsible for a good portion of this. It is partially on you for bringing a prisoner here when you were not told to take prisoners. Huh. I would not advise, ever again, you bring something back here. There are too many wild cards here. Simply because law exists here does not mean that everyone will follow it. Now, that being said, I'm going to start speaking to you like adults instead of children. And it starts with this. I think you should do this, but I don't think you should do this for us. I think you should do this for yourselves. I seen the way that you handled what happened out there. I think you can handle this. You seem more than capable. And I would like to see your skills tested anyway. Because what I have for you next, if you're willing to undertake it, is going to be rather significant. You asked about what's happened to the north, to the mountains. Once we have finalized our peer with the gem, we can confirm the information that Ra has brought to us. The creatures to the north twist the minds of those that they encounter. They twist the minds, they twist the land, they twist perception. 
And not in a way that is the magic of illusion. Not in the way that is the magic of transmutation. Not in the way that is the magic of enchantment. In a way unlike any other. It is like they exist as chaos itself. Agents that wish to season the mind with insanity. These creatures feed on the thoughts and actions of others. And their minds itself. Twisted mind creatures in a rapidly blightening landscape. The reason we've been unable to get messages back from people is we do not get messages back that we would see as messages. Imagine your mind was no longer your own anymore and you tried to send a message. It would sound merely like the ravings on the wind. It's not that we can't see what's happening. We can see. The gray is the chaos. The darkness is a lack of our minds being able to comprehend what is there. After my recent communication with Iraklis, I have confirmed that the gem option will still give us the clarity we need. If you can complete this issue with these rare creatures, I will have one final request of you before I send you, if you wish, on your way to deal, to aid in the issues in the mountains. That request will be to finish things with the shifters in whatever way you see fit. You will need to find wherever it is that they roost and have whatever conversations you need. Maldronicus, I will trust your judgment in whatever the final decision is. After that, if your will is to venture to those mountains, you will have my blessing. But know this, if you choose to venture towards those mountains, there will be no reinforcements for you. There will be none to follow if one of you falls. We will not know. We will not be able to provide such reinforcements. If you find them there, then it is the gods wishing you aid. But otherwise, once you go, it may be difficult to return, and it will be even more difficult for you to resupply. Is that like adults enough to you? Is that clear enough? for you guys? Or have I left something out that you might want? You seem very much so after I give you information to tell me that I'm the one that hasn't given you enough information, and not that you're the ones who failed to ask the questions, since we're being adults here. Um, from his descriptions, what I since I specifically did research on like demons and stuff, is this screaming demons to Arius right now or No, demons don't necessarily work with like mind corrupting magic. Things that okay. twist your that can twist your mind to uh, bring you to a loss of self. Uh, demons are normally very uh, I cut you open, I like drink your blood, I eat your body. I uh, use your soul for powerful things. They sound familiar to Arius, but when he tries to think about it, there's just a massive blank space in his mind. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll look to the party. Any questions before we head out?
if if no one has any questions, I I have. Yeah, oh, I, I don't think I would have any specific questions. I would just uh, I'd just uh, more or less uh, express to Tonali that. Um, <clears throat> Our group has established a very a very good synergy. I trust in our ability to handle um, a lot of the situations that may arise. Um, and if there's been any any potential mistakes we've made, it's been out of potential my misunderstanding of my place in this world. Um, and my lack of resolve. And I think uh, I've learned my lesson on that. Front. Maldronicus, listen. And he places a hand on your shoulder. I do not find fault in you as a person. I do not find fault in your actions as you. You're going to make mistakes. Things are going to be missed. But the blame has to stop. Simply fix the problems if they're made. You know what I mean? Yes. But for someone as meticulously detailed as I am, it, it feels foolish to have overseen something as semantical as that. I understand. It's very obvious. I can understand. With time, hopefully you'll gain the wisdom to see past that. I, the gods do not operate in a logical framework to me, so I do not understand how they act or what it is. Sometimes the gods have their own logic. Do these, do these beings that we might be fighting, do we know if they have a god? They have a purpose? That we do not. They don't match anything on the records that we've seen. Every bit of research that we do simply ends in us finding nothing that matches. There's some references to types of madness that these things may cause, but these books are from an untrusted source. Someone who doesn't exist and has never existed. That someone got a name? Candor? While I was observing them, would I have been able to, like, just use my monster lore on them? Sure. You happen to... So... Let me see how- Basically, it looks like it's just a knowledge check to discern their <clears throat> abilities and weaknesses, but I get to add my wisdom modifier to whatever check. Okay. Um, so what this is going to be is it's going to be a knowledge- uh, This is either going to be a knowledge religion or a knowledge the planes. You can make the I'll choice- take that religion or you can, check. <laughs> or you can make both. Um, because both could be relevant. And it both could give you different 100. information. <laughs> uh, I'm not trained in planes. Okay. So give me a knowledge religion. What's that plus two? Okay. Uh, 25 is very good and will give you some insight, but not a lot. Um, be at 27. So you would recognize the... You'd recognize some of this as being shaped after a long kind of lost god. Um, one that is said to no longer exist in the pantheon. That the He exists outside of the realm of the traditional gods. Um, these creatures are, with, the, with watching like some of them devour the minds of others, uh, you would recognize them as being creatures that are likely products of the Kashram. Um, the Kashram was known to hunger for intellect, um, 
to hunger for the various tastes that come along with like the minds of others. Uh, <coughs> it was known to inflict madness upon those who followed him and those who opposed him. Um, his country that he ruled over, uh, well, it was a place of order. It was also a place filled with great madness. Many people losing themselves as technology overtook them. They would become focused on desires of the self, becoming ultra hedonistic. Uh, pleasure was the only thing that these people wanted and they would do anything to gain the pleasure that they desired. It created a most delectable thing for the Kashram. These creatures could very well be byproducts products of the Kashram if it had some way to still interact with the material world. But he's been gone for a long time. No one has heard any act or thing about the Kashram. But this could be him making a presence once more. So, uh, he mentioned these books. Yes. Where'd you happen to find them? Uh, there are books throughout the various libraries of Sushant that I've managed, that we've managed to come across. Just a couple. Uh, we've had people scour through them just to check their legitimacy. Unfortunately, no one can find any proof that this person ever existed. So we have no reason to believe that books written by people that aren't real it's probably would have fact. A name. I would imagine, but if you're <clears throat> going to talk about things like insanities, you would figure you would want to you'd want to be renowned for your understanding of those insanities, not keep yourself hidden then no one can prove fact of your work. No one can ta check to see what your knowledge is compared to that of others. It's the work of a madman to write a pen name on a book about how knowledgeable you are as a person. Hmm. Could be. Also might help him stay away from those mad people that are pe making people more insane. Uh, I would... I would be terrified if a madman were attempting to go to war with another madman. Especially if he's powerful enough to know of the things that he talks about in the book with, great, with the detail at which he does. Even, even if his methods are unconventional, um, I do the... Oh, damn it. Uh oh, Mars got to him. Yep, <laughs> erased from all of history. <laughs> this is what happens when you start talking about people that don't exist. You get erased from history. That was weird. <laughs> that so, staff uh, of time. <laughs> Very dramatic pause. No. Uh, <laughs> um, even if his method, if his methods are unconventional, I can speak to the accuracy of what it is that he writes about. How so? Uh, do you mean? <clears throat> You're not the only one. Let's just say he he knows things of individuals that they don't even know of themselves. That would be very unlikely that he guessed all of these things. To know that kind of thing, you'd have to be one of the most powerful wizards that's ever walked the world. Which is why despite not being able to prove uh, much, I, I would take a lot of stake in what it is that you have recovered from him. And if and if you could permit it, I would like to research those materials myself. I will provide them with you if you can return from your quest, if you're choosing to take it. Very well. I can agree to that. You're able to 
get them from the library? We have our own access to libraries. Huh. Interesting. These are not books about specific people. These are books that Kandor has written uh, and specifically left on shelves. Oh, okay. Because we know, we know that the information that we've been getting from those, like that cove, is from Kandor, right? Or I'm not meddling there? No, you do know that's from Kandor. Okay. Yeah, both of us uh, have separately went in there and found right. stuff. So Mal, Mal is of the opinion that Kandor is, I, he doesn't know how he works or how old he is or if he's even like, um, like, um, not a god, but like, uh, he's very impressed at his ability to basically know, like, almost everything about uh, Cassius, even stuff that Cassius didn't know. So it's like, how does he know that, right? Mm -hmm. So a little unnerving. Okay. Um, let's take a quick five-minute break, and then we'll discuss heading out to defeat the lions. I'm going to take this five-minute break to get my kid into bed, so I might be slightly longer than five. Sounds good. No problem. You got a five-minute time limit. One draw. <laughs> <laughs> 